In the last lesson, we looked at our correlation coefficient r very briefly. We kind of learned how to calculate it, but that was pretty much it. But this correlation coefficient tells us a lot of things. It tells us if there is a relationship between x and y. And this correlation coefficient is for our sample. We do have a second correlation coefficient, and that is for the population. It is denoted with the Greek letter rho. This letter looks like a P, a fancy looking P, but it's the Greek letter rho, and that stands for the population coefficient. This is unknown. We do not know what the population coefficient is, but we can run some numbers and work with R, which is our sample correlation coefficient. Now, just to remind you, the correlation coefficient of R is going to range somewhere between negative 1 and positive 1. If your value is closer to negative 1, then you have a strong negative correlation between your x and y. That means as x increases, y decreases. It also means as x decreases, y increases. It has the opposite thing happening. As x gets higher, uh, gets larger, y gets smaller. As x gets smaller, y gets larger. So it's this opposite effect. That is a no negative correlation. If it's closer to positive 1, if r is closer than po to positive 1, then that means that they have a positive relationship. As in, when x gets larger, y gets larger. When x gets smaller, y gets smaller. They're doing the same thing. Now the closer you get to zero, that the weaker those two relationships become until there is actually no relationship. There's no correlation between x and y the closer you get to zero. <laughs> and if you were looking at your data, the closer it is to zero, the more scattered your data is. We are going to use our R inside our hypothesis testing now. And we're going to conclude some things. If our test says that the correlation coefficient is significantly different from zero, then we say the correlation coefficient is significant. There is sufficient evidence to conclude that the significant linear relationship between x and y because the correlation coefficient is significantly different from zero. Likewise, if the test concludes that the correlation coefficient is not significantly different from zero, meaning it's close to zero, we can say that the correlation coefficient is not significant. There's insufficient evidence to conclude that there is significant linear relationship between x and y because the correlation coefficient is not significantly different from zero. We are going to have that significance level, like alpha. We're going to have this level that we have to meet. If we do not meet that level, then we can say it's not significantly different from zero. Okay, so when we are going through our hypothesis test, our steps aren't really that too much different. We do have to state our null and alternate uh, hypotheses. But in this case, we're not using mu, we're not using p for proportions. We're going to use rho for our population coefficient. h0 is always going to be, or into our terms, rho equals 0, meaning it's not significantly different from 0. ha is going to be rho does not equal 0, meaning it is significantly different from 0. When we draw our conclusion, there's a couple of ways of making decisions. We can use a p-value, which is strictly what we're going to concentrate on. The other is we can use a table of critical values. We are not going to concentrate on that at all. We're going to use technology to grab p-values. We also are always going to use a significance level of alpha equals 0 0.05. Now, I'll work through an example in just a little bit. But when using the TI-84, we're really going to use a linear regression t-test. That's the test we're going to use. We used it in the previous example, but we're going to use some values on there this time that we're going to be able to test our hypothesis. Again, if our p-value is less than our significance, we reject our null hypothesis. There is nothing different there. 
our conclusion is slightly different because it deals with the significance of our linear relationship, but our decision is no different than it was before. If our p-value is not less than our significance level, then we do not reject our null hypothesis, and our conclusion is just slightly different um, regarding the significance of linear relationship. Now, we're going to be using technology to calculate p-value, but I want to show you what the formula is for the test statistic, and you can see right here it includes r. It's based on r, both in the numerator and the denominator, and it's based on n. Those are the only two things it's based on, really. So r and n, at least for variables. Because you're not going to have to memorize this test statistic, you're just going to use your TI-84, or I'll show you how to do it on a website. It's just going to be plugging in some values. Last go round, we had a third exam versus a final exam example, and we kind of said, okay, well, there's a relationship with this uh, to be able to build our best fit line. In that calculation, we had an R value of 0 0.6631, and there are 11 data points. So what we can do is grab the p-value from that test, okay? and I think I actually may still have it in my calculator. I'm going to pull it up pretty quickly here. Hold on just a sec. Beautiful. It does look like I have my data still in there from the previous, so I'm going to do stat test and I want the linear regression t-test so that's an f l1 is my x values l2 is my y values and our frequency is 1 we're going to say our row does not equal 0 and we're going to calculate it in this case remember our alpha is 0 0.05 our p-value is 0 0.0262 so our p-value is less than our alpha, and therefore I have to reject H0, meaning that rho failed to equal 0. So we are saying that there is significantly different from 0. So we reject H0. There's sufficient evidence to conclude there is significant linear relationship between the third exam score and the final exam score because the correlation coefficient is significantly different from zero. If you don't have access to the TI-84, you can still use technology. We have a few websites out there that you'll need to use. You'll actually use two websites. One is to calculate R. The other is to translate the R into a p-value. Once you have your p-value, you then compare it to alpha. Okay, so I am on the Social Science Statistics website, and I'm using their Pearson Correlation Coefficient Calculator. I've inputted all the values for the test score, so the X values are that third exam test scores, and the Y values are the final exam test score. And right down here, I'm going to calculate R. Once we have our R value, there we go, the R calculation is 0 0.6631, so here is our R value. Once we have our R value, I'm just going to copy, you don't have to copy and paste it, and I'm going to go over to Social Science Calculator, and it's the p-value from the Pearson R calculator. Here's our R. We do have to tell it how many our N values there were. So I'm just going to go quickly over here, put in our N value. Our alpha is 0 0.05, and we're going to say calculate. Our P value is 0 0.0267. P is less than alpha, and therefore we reject H0, and our, it is significant. Our result is significant because it is different from 0. Remember, it's always going back to that uh, H null and H alternative, where rho equals 0 or rho does not equal 0. In our case, we rejected that rho equals 0, 
and therefore it's significantly different from zero, and we can say that our row is different from zero. So that's how you would use the technology using the websites. First calculate your R value, then translate that R value using your N over to a P value. There is that second method. I am not going to run through this second method. Um, you can go ahead and read through the book. There is a table that you can use. You would have to figure out your degree of freedom, N minus 2, and then find your critical values using that the the n minus 2. For ours we had 11 values so 11 minus 2 is 9. Our critical values are 0 0.602 positive and negative and then we would compare our alpha our value to that critical value. But again I will allow you you allow you I will let you go through that on your own. I don't think it's well it's an okay method to use I just really like using the technology. If the problem is going to set you up with data or statistics, might as well use the technology to get to the answer fairly quickly. But certainly go through the examples if you want to try out method number two. So we know, and I'm just going to run through this very quickly, our R value was 0 0.6631. Our critical value was 0 0.62. R is significant because it's greater than our critical value. So because it's greater than the critical value, we reject the null hypothesis. But that's completely like backwards from comparing P, and I think it can get very confusing. That's why I say, although this method works, it's confusing. I would just stick with translating the R over to a P value and then comparing your P value to alpha and st stick with the practice you've already done. If P is less than alpha, then it is rejected. If P is greater than alpha, then it is not rejected. Okay, so I'm going to let you go ahead and finish that up, practice whichever version you want to do. So until next time, be seeing ya.